Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. Hello, hello. Welcome to the All In Podcast with Nate Payo. Of course, I am your host, Nate Payo. My guest today is Nicole Dickman. She is the CEO at Envoy Managed Services and somebody I've been super excited to have uh, come on my show. We've we've connected a couple times. I had to reschedule, but she's a super exciting person. I'm really thrilled to be here. Welcome to the show, Nicole. How are you? I am very good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we... We connected through uh, a mutual Facebook group that we were a part of, um, but I thought your story was very interesting because you were working for a company uh, and you the company was, I guess, restructuring and they had sourced out some of their work and, and one of it was your department. And you decided to go off and start your own as a consultant for them. Um, and then a f- a few months later, I think it was, your your company decided to restructure further and basically end, um, relocate all your IT staff. And you just felt this compelling that said, hey, I want to keep the team together. I think we could do a lot together. I think we can be an amazing company. And you decided to do it, start your own business and see where it goes. So I'm, I'm really interested to hear like that story and what kind of led up to it. Okay, well... All about people, right? So finance and IT in and of themselves are a little bit of a dry subject, but we had a lot of fun and did a lot of projects working together over the years. I was in finance with the IT team that did the heavy lifting and really implemented all of our wild ideas. So when they went through a relocation initiative, um, it was at the same time that they had announced a very large acquisition, which was kind of where finance and IT are most needed. And so the timing is very interesting and it was a little upsetting. And I thought after a decade, you know, this job that I've built up to is going to be gone and I don't know what to do. And I had some really great people around me who helped to see the opportunity of a difficult time and use it as a little bit of a catalyst to do something different. So I started my own company and helped them through the acquisition and a consulting role. And I kind of thought, okay, this is the new normal. We're going to do consulting. It's going to be fine. The minute I settled in and thought that that was going to be the next stage, lo and behold, they relocated the IT team as well. And when everyone declined, this team that we had worked together for over a decade, it was like, we can't just all go our different ways. We've done so much together. If I can do it on the finance side, then why can't we start a company, hire everyone who's declining the relocation? and basically sell our services back as an outsourced model to our former employer. So that's what we did. It was a little risky, but it was also a lot of reward because we got to keep the team together. And ultimately, it was a win-win. I love that story because there's this like calling that I think you had. And and, and you're the, the CEO of the company. You're the, you're the leadership of the company. And a lot of people could have said, you know what, hey, it, it, it's, it's not my thing to worry about. Like, I'll go get another job. I'll go start over here. I'm just going to worry about what I can control, which is myself. And if some other people maybe want to get on board, we can chat about it. But not take the whole department and build a whole company around all these people and decide like, hey, let's go do this. So like, what kind of went through your mind that just said, hey, this is something that, that uh, I just feel I can't not do? Okay. Well, to be totally honest, it wasn't just a clear path. I was um, sitting in a wine bar having a little um, afternoon glass of wine with somebody that I'd worked with for a long time. And it sort of started off as you're dreaming, right? thinking, oh, well, it would be so nice if we could do this. And what if we could keep the team together? And what if we could find a way to have our former employer want to have a company that outsources? And it started, quite honestly, on a Thursday afternoon with a little bit of what ifing. And I think that it sort of took hold and gained momentum because deep down, the logic was there. If we could come up with some sort of a sound financial model and then the gut that, wow, we could really do this, 
months, in the next three or four days, it went from a, what if this would be nice to a, oh my goodness, we have a business plan and we actually can move forward and try to get it done. So I think it kind of started with a dream, having an idea, and then having the people around you who are kind of willing to build on that momentum. And one person alone, maybe it sounds a little bananas, but when you start to get the people around you's input and figure out how this could really work and you get buy-in, then all of a sudden, you know, you've got something that you can run with. And that's Mm. sort of what happened. It was the team mentality. Well, there's something you pointed out. One, crazy ideas always start on when uh, wine Wednesdays at the bar, right? Or or the afternoon (laughs) day drinking. They always start there. But every time like I've wanted to go out and start a business, it's usually by myself. And the ideas of like, how am I going to do this? How am I ever going to come that? Like I'll get roadblocked against it. But whenever I'm working on it with like a team of people, the stuff that I think might be roadblocks, all of a sudden are like, don't even worry about that. That's like the easy stuff. We'll take care of it. So I think there might be something to be said that, that, while the idea was created um, with a few people, you bring the whole team together and there's a lot more resources saying like, hey, these are the problems we're going to see. How are we going to solve them? And you're able to utilize your team members to kind of do it. And I don't think a lot of people have like um, that instant team, that instant rapport that everybody kind of knows everybody's strengths and weaknesses. You just kind of like flow together in a real good space. So you're almost at like an advantage of going, hey, we're just taking our group here and we're going to go show, you know, a bunch of other people around the world that we can do the same thing. So I I think that's pretty, pretty cool uh, way of going about it. Um, I agree. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead. I was going to say, there's also something that I learned from a wise friend, which is the worst thing you can do is fail. So back when I first started the finance consulting, I was going to have to look for another job anyway. So trying this out and seeing if it could work. I mean, the worst thing I could do is fail and then ultimately go find a job working for somebody else. So I think we had a little bit of that. You know what? Let's go for it. If we fail, we're no worse off than we were before people still are going to have to be employed. So if we can, like your podcast is, go all in and see if we can make a run of it. At the end, if we have to find jobs, we find jobs, but we never want to look back and wish we had tried and not. I love that. That leads me to my first question that I usually ask my guests, is this idea of luck. Do you believe in luck? Is luck something that happens to people? What's your, what's your take on luck? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, Luck is really tough for me. There have been opportunities that I've been presented with, like we've just been discussing, where I don't know if it's luck or whatever you want to call it, intervention, karma, but there have been supporters around me that have helped me see what could be. Not just me. It didn't just drop on on my doorstep. It wasn't necessarily something I was seeking out, but there was this community of support and ideas and we were able to make the best of it. So maybe to answer your question directly, it's got to be a combination of recognizing what your options are and then maybe having the support system in the gut to take a step forward. Is that a good enough answer? <laughs> well, there's there's definitely no right or wrong answer. I, right. I like to see um, what people's take on it, what kind of like sets of apart, because I think, you know, not everybody uh, can be a, a leader. Not everybody wants to be a CEO. Not everybody wants to be the boss. And, and, and there's like a bit of craziness to say like, hey, I'm going to go out and, and do this on my own. And, and but, but people that kind of, do this, a lot of them say like, I'm lucky, but they also put themselves in positions that have a lot more chance for success to happen or a lot more chance for positive outcomes. So it's almost like people create their own luck uh, by being around more positive outcomes and then they become aware of the opportunities and situations. And so like, you're right, like it just, you know, it didn't just show up on your doorstep, but at the same time, like you were, you were aware of what was going on and you, and you took initiative to do it which I think is, is huge. Um, how, how many people are on your team and how, uh, you know, what was, were, were people reluctant when they were looking to join you? Right. So we fluctuated um, anywhere between nine and 13 full-time people on our team. And I think to go back to something you said earlier, one of the reasons that we were able to do this is 
we had a great team mentality. We took care of each other. There was rapport. There was authentic interaction where, you know, the pros and cons and the risks and the rewards were discussed. Um, And so I think that's all very important, putting out into the universe good things. And then eventually I feel like those come back. It's kind of like doing business with people that you enjoy doing business with um, makes everything much better. So with all of that foundation kind of laid, I don't, and, and in combination with what's the worst thing we can do, fail. I don't think there was a lot of problems getting buy-in because there was authentic communication and everyone was pretty upfront about what their fears and what their desires for what this could work out to be were. And so I know that sounds risky. That's probably the riskiest thing is being open in business and balancing the fact that you have to be a leader with, I don't actually know everything and being able to let everyone have a seat at the table and feel like their opinions are valued. And that opportunity helped drive a lot of buy-in. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, had you been like, you know, to be a CEO, were you already the leader or was becoming the CEO a real challenge for you? Like what was like the things that like you really learned very quickly that you had to change your mindset if, if this was going to be a, a successful business? Okay. So I've always been bossy and known what I wanted in my former roles. And when you're the subject matter expert, which I kind of was in my company in finance, it's easy to think, well, if I can do that, then, you know, this is going to be fine. And being a leader was an extraordinarily difficult change. Being a fish out of water and trying to run an IT company where everyone in the room that works with me is smarter than I am in terms of what the technology that we're doing is, It went from being, I'm a subject matter expert and I can figure out what needs to happen to, oh my goodness, now more than ever, everyone else in the room is very important. Like I can't do any of this without them. So um, I think my first step was going to managing. It had nothing to do with leadership. It was a lot of insecurity and a lot of, um, I mean, insecurity is the best thing. Like, am I really the right person to do this? How do I lead people that are smarter than I am? How do I set this up for success? How do I even go on a sales call if I can't talk as eloquently about our solutions as the uh, team around me can? So first, it was just easy to invest myself in managing the day-to-day. How do we get payroll done, business insurance, the accounting, the finance, the meetings, et cetera. Very easy to sort of get into that easy flow. And it wasn't until we had another series of challenges that I sort of got the swift kick that I needed to say, okay, it's no longer enough for me to just run the company. If we're going to be successful long-term and make the most of this, I've got to do something more. And that was what turned into a leadership path. But it took several years of, I'm not going to say complacency, but definitely coasting Mm -hmm. before I realized that I needed to transition what I was doing and actually lead. What was that uh, aha moment you had that transitioned you into (laughs) manager to leader? When you get your superwoman cape? Oh my goodness, no superwoman cape. It was um, another very difficult scenario. And in 2018, our largest client, our former employer that we were formed to serve, informed us that they would be changing their budget around and that several of the positions that we'd had since the beginning would have to be cut. And so the obvious answer was, well, just have to let those people that are in those positions go. And that didn't feel right. Um, We started as a team. We did this to keep the team together. So to just cut people out when times got tough didn't make any sense to me. So a lot of late night, uh, 2.56 a.m. is my witching hour when my brain goes and goes and goes about what is it that's supposed to happen right now. And I had one of those moments and woke up and did a financial model at 3 a.m., which is not, you know, when my brain functions best, but apparently there is clarity. So did the financial model, how can I set aside funds to keep these team members together long enough to focus on growth, get more clients, and baby basically cover their expenses. So that's what I did and went to them with a proposal that if I can cover the costs of these team members for this amount of time and give us runway, can we get together, call it the growth task force, it started as a joke, but it's actually called that now, start the growth task force. And instead of serving this client that you used to serve, Your time and energy is going to be spent helping us figure out how to sell services that you can then provide. And so hopefully with everyone's hard work 
and I don't know if you call it luck, uh, you would then um, be able to have a long-term position. And each of those people are still here today. Yeah, I, I love that approach because one, you know, when, when you're faced with challenges, the, I think that's when the, the biggest chance for opportunity occurs. And you have the easy solution, which maybe is standing out there, but it doesn't feel right. And the, you know, the other solution is like, hey, I need to keep these people on the team, but how do I do it? And then you start asking the questions and it starts with like, well, they need to be paid this much money. So that means I need to bring in the revenue of this much money to, to make up just break even. And okay, where's that, in, where's that gonna come from? Who could we serve? How could we get there? And you start just digging through those answers. And if you break them down into enough detail, you just start going like, oh, here is a path to do so. And, and if I go down this path, I'm going to uh, be able to, to keep these people on and knock on wood, these are all great people. So are they gonna be able to pull their weight and then some most likely? And so then like the business can grow and serve more other people because they're going to do a lot more. And I think, it also gives those the, the people a sense of ownership in the team. If you say, hey, look, you know, things are tight, you're out of here. No, things are tight. You guys are gonna figure out ways to to lift this company up. And then those ideas come from things that maybe, hey, CEO's gotta make all the decisions and they've got to have all the right ideas. And it's like, no, the CEO isn't there to always have the ideas. They're there to, to give guidance, to, I guess herd cats and provide a general direction. But, you know, some of the best ideas come from the people on the front lines and you get them to implement their ideas. The business takes off, you're able to serve more people. So I think that was an amazing act of leadership um, that you demonstrated, which just goes down to the questions you ask yourselves. Whenever you get it, whether it's like deciding you want to start your business, a business challenge, or how could you do something, like keep asking yourself questions so you get the answer. Because if you say, oh, that we tried everything. Like you've never tried. If there's no way anybody's ever said, I've tried everything. Because right. if you ask enough questions, you'll get deeper and deeper and deeper into it and you'll find a way to do it. So, you know, the thing that they say is the impossible is only impossible until somebody else does it. And then it's like, oh shit, we can all do that. That's once we've seen it's possible, we can believe it's possible and then we can figure out a way to execute it. So I love I love that strategy that that you showed to get there. Thank you. It was my unintentional leap into leadership. I'll tell you that. It wasn't literally until I had the challenge of keeping the team together that it was like, okay, I, 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 we're going to go out there and we're going to do this. And mm -hmm. when you're motivated by caring for other people and you've got other people around you that are moving in the same direction, it makes it that much easier to kind of go full steam ahead. Yeah. I think managing is something that can be taught to people, but leadership... Like you can learn the skills it takes to be a leader, but everybody's got to find their inner voice of how they are. And I think the trial by fire really is where people discover their leadership. It, it's the the challenges and, and some are the small challenges and some are like major trials by fire, but that's what's going to bring it out in you. So that leads me to my next question that I like to ask my guests, which is uh, related to the title and the name of the show, which is All In. So what does being all in on an idea or an outcome mean to you? So I would say it's a combination. Uh, for me to make a major decision, I need three things to align. I've got to, based on my background, have a financial model, some sort of a plan where logic makes sense and I understand how to pay for things, how things are going to work, like the whole logistics and finance side of a major decision, especially in business. And then I have to feel kind of in my heart that this is the way that I'm supposed to go. I can't just make those decisions um, based on the logic and the financial model. But then for some reason for me, those two things alone are not enough. I can feel good about it. And I can know that it'll logistically work, but I've literally got to have that gut instinct that this is the way we have to go. And when those three things align, no matter how crazy whatever I'm about to do feels right, is then I go and I do it and that's it. And it's, it's complete and it's absolute and the doubts have to be set aside and recognized and it's just move forward. If those three things align, then I'm on the right course and this has got to go forward. Yeah. I love that answer. It's just like trust in your gut. You have the facts. Now trust your gut and then go for it. 
make that make that decision and move it forward. And I think that's also something you've demonstrated in your story is that you've been pretty decisive when the time comes. It's like we talk about it, we figure out a plan, and then it's okay, decision time, let's go out and execute. And there's not this standing on the sidelines, should we or should we not? start a business like what's worse could can happen we're going to do it you know should we or should we, like how we keep people on the on the payroll we'll find a solution like you've clearly shown that that when you're it's time to get busy thinking you know you've you've done a great job of finding solutions and establish a lot of leadership so very to, cool sorry not to say that i don't annoy everyone around me when i'm in the analysis stage it can be analysis paralysis i ask a ton of questions sometimes i'm even wishy because sometimes I'm just waiting for those feelings to all align so that I feel comfortable going forward and going all in. Until mm-hmm. then, it can almost be uh, a challenge for the team around me. And they'll be like, okay, are we ready? Have you got that feeling yet? Is it time to go? Have we had answered enough questions? So it's not easy, but when it happens, it's fabulous. Yeah, I know that that like feeling when you like do like crazy stuff that only works for you because like sometimes I'll have like a problem that I'll be trying to solve and I I can't like grasp it. Like I feel like it's slippery. It's like it's eluding me and I just know like hey, I just need to put this away and I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to take an, you know, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'll I'll have the answer and it'll like what I feel like would be, you know, pounding my head against a wall for like 6 hours to get done will take 20 minutes if like my brain processes it and puts all the pieces together in my head. And then I go, and it's just like, well, why did it make so much sense? Well, I solved the problem <laughs> in my head first. And uh, that part was painful. You just didn't get to see it. Um, very cool. So there's some other stuff you wanted to talk about, uh, some of the programs that you're having through the month of June. So I'd like to give you a chance to talk about what you're up to right now. Okay, so never a dull moment. Uh, with everything that's going on around us, the challenges and um, just the environment, we as a team got together and said, you know, every time we've had a rough spot or a challenge, we've ral- had people that have rallied around us and helped, mo- you know, give us the momentum to keep going. So when we're in a position where we can give back, it's super important for us to do that. So the team got together and said, what makes the most sense as a way for us to help the community around us? And what we decided, there are a series of really fun talks that first started off as, wouldn't it be neat if we, and then pretty soon, an hour later, we you, had a plan. I got to ask, do you, have a wine bar, do you have a wine bar in your, in your office? And this is where all the ideas are created. No, they're not all tied to wine bars. Um, This was just a conversation with like-minded team members that have been here from the start and know that we can make the best out of an otherwise bad situation. And also kind of recognizing that even though it's an uncomfortable feeling, what's going on around us, that's usually what precedes something awesome. So let's go out there and do something to get back and help those around us. So we have launched a service called Teletech, and you can read more about it on our website. During certain times on certain days, users have the ability to chat live with our technical team, get whatever their personalized questions are about how to use technology to not only survive, but to really thrive during this time when we're dealing with hybrid working situations. So they can talk one-on-one with our technical team and get their questions answered. It's completely free. It's our way of not only feeling inspired together as a team, but being able to help those around us make it through this time and maybe even be a part of whatever their next big, great thing is. So that's, that's super important to me to get the word out there. Cause again, it's something you want to do for free. Yeah. That's amazing. The amazing way to help people that don't always have the resources to get the answers they need and they don't know where to turn and look to it. So that, that link will be in the show notes. Um, so you'll be able to, to, to find it from there if you're listening to this and you want to find out more. Um, so let's talk a little bit about who are the people you serve? Who's that ideal client relationship you're looking for the one where they just you know rise to super high levels working with you and it feels like your team's just really fit and groove and work excellent with that person too okay so if it goes way back to the beginning we started as an internal it organization and so we work best when we're seen as a partner or as an extension of whatever our client is doing at the time and uh, we don't want to be your outsourced person. We don't want to be dial a tech. We don't want to do anything like that. We want to be 
almost like a team member that just happens to wear an Envoy shirt. So that's a very broad statement to say that rapport and the relationship and the people we work with are more important than the actual specifics of industry, user count, et cetera. We do find that we can serve anywhere from a small business of three to five people up to you know our largest client, which is over 2,000 users and anything in between. Our sweet spot is probably your medium-sized business that has some complex IT issues and their users need a help desk or they have some other systems they need managed. But as long as we're going to be, be able to come in and help and be seen as a part of the team, then we can work with just about anyone. I know that's very vague and people say you're supposed to define it or you can't find it. And I feel like if we start with the relationship, then some really great things happen as a result of that. It, it's true. Like it's hard to define what that relationship looks like, but I think you know what it feels like. And that relationship, like it, people that you work well with, they tend to have people that they work well with in their, in their life too. And they're the people that are going to refer you like the right fit. So I think it is about, you know, discovering who your tribe is. And, and part of that is, you know, when it's relationship based, it's not always, well, they, they have, you know, they're at this age range, just dollar volume in this industry with these key skills and sort of these markets. It's like, Hey, they're more like, they like to work this way. They have, you know, this attention to detail and, and they're in this spot. And it just like, you're right. You know, I, I think you're, you're defining it um, in a way that that'll work for you. So. I hope so. Cool. So far we've had some really great experiences <laughs> and things have come from introductions that we never would have expected. And had we had a preconceived notion going in that we would or would not be able to work in a certain environment, then we would have lost out on a really great opportunity. So um, while we have our own sort of sweet spots at the same time, we're really about the relationship, which is awesome. kind of fun for an IT company. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. Awesome. So where can somebody find you if they want to check you out? Where should we send them? Yes, to envoymanagedservices.com to learn more about our IT company. And um, I can give you some contact information for a direct reach out. Awesome. So those links again will be on the show notes and I encourage you to reach out to Nicole, have a conversation with her. She's a great person. She's a ton of fun to talk talk to. I'd even say, hey, even if you don't have an immediate need for her, just have a conversation and see what she's up to and see what she's got going because you never know uh, where relationships take you. And I always encourage everybody to meet and connect with as many people as you can because you're just you know one relationship away from having a, an amazing impact in, in somebody's life or in your life. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.